G'day, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be looking at brake fluid and changing brake fluid on our car. And we're gonna be doing that using this ToolPro vacuum brake bleeder. All right, so as a general rule, you should be changing your brake fluid every two years. That's what Volkswagen, Audi, Ford say. Obviously you consult your owner's manual for your type of car, but generally every two years is a good time to change your brake fluid. And you have to do this because brake fluid absorbs water, it's hygroscopic, and water can get in through the brake lines, the reservoir, the piston boots, all those kind of things. Um, it doesn't take a lot of water to to affect the brake fluid, uh, but it does so by lowering the boiling point of that fluid. So obviously water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, brake fluid somewhere around 250 plus degrees Celsius. Mix the two, that boiling point's gonna come down. And of course, lowering boiling point means you could run the risk of boiling your fluid, uh, which when you boil liquids, they turn to gases, and gases are compressible, giving you a spongy brake pedal. And of course water also leads to corrosion, so if you've got water in the system you can rust out expensive parts of equipment, which you don't want to do. In the USA, the Department of Transport count this classification system for brake fluids, which is generally the system used around the world. Uh, those classifications define the, the boiling points of the fluid and the viscosity index of that fluid. Uh, typical fluids in use in automobiles are dot three, dot four, dot five point one. There are others, but we'll just stick to what's common. Dot three and dot four are glycol ether based. Uh, dot five point one is glycol ether with borate ester added to raise the boiling point. The classification lists two different boiling points: a wet and a dry boiling point. Uh, the dry one is straight from a sealed bottle. So that's the best that the fluid's going to get and the wet is at four percent contamination so four percent water and they provide the dry and the wet boil point so as you can see here uh, dot three boils at 200 a minimum of 205 celsius or 401 fahrenheit dot four minimum 230 celsius 446 fahrenheit dot 5.1 260 celsius or 500 fahrenheit and you notice that the wet figures uh, 140c 155c and 180c are quite a lot lower than than our starting point so it only takes a little bit of water to drastically lower your, your boiling point and obviously that's no good which is why we change our fluid so what fluid should you use well best advice consult your owner's manual talk to your dealer but the majority of modern cars use dot four this is a heavy duty dot four from super cheap we'll go over the specs of this shortly um, but yeah, I use DOT4 in the Mondeo because that's what it says in the manual. In the Golf, the VR6 that goes to track days, gets really hot sometimes. I've been using DOT5.1, never had, never had any brake fade. Brakes have got pretty hot. They just work like a, a charm on DOT5.1. Um, so that's what I've been using there. The manual specs DOT4, DOT5.1, my upgrade. Give me some extra performance, I feel. I'm happy with that. There are plenty of different ways to change your brake fluid and different tools that make the job easier or harder, depending on what the tool is. I've been using, pretty common, one of these one, one man bleeder kits uh, for years. Uh, it works, it's cheap, it's like 10 bucks. Uh, you've got the magnet here so you can stick it on your brake disc. This goes onto your bleed nipple. You pump the pedal, loosen the um, bleed nipple, and the fluid goes in here. Once you get to the top there, then you're probably pretty much done for that wheel. Move on to the next one. Uh, so yeah, that works well. It's cheap, no problems, but let's look at another option. This comes in a big fancy box. This is the Tool Pro Vacuum Pump Brake Bleeder Kit. Uh, this is kind of next level up. Hopefully it'll make things a bit easier, even quicker. But yeah, we'll go over this tool and um, get it in use on the car. Mm -hmm. 
Right, so here's our tool. Here's the main main unit. Nice solid metal construction. We've got a vacuum and a pressure gauge on the front here because this does um, pressure and vacuum. Uh, so a lot of uses, not just for bleeding bleeding brakes. Uh, but it's an incredible vacuum. It's all a bit of kit. And then we've got a selection of adapters, bits for joining to um, brake nipples and all the other bits and joiners and bits of hose, actually set up for a number of ways. Also got some longer bits of hose up here and we got two vacuum reservoirs. One that just comes with a lid and the one that's got you attach your pump to and have your kind of inlet and pump side graduated with ounces and mills. Got a handy wee tap, there's no ring in there. Stop it getting a well, make sure it's got a good seal. So, yeah, I'll get it set up and we'll head over to the car, give it a test. Right, here we are at the car, we're under the bonnet, under the hood, uh, you can see our yellow brake fluid reservoir there, got our vacuum pump here. So first job is to take all the old fluid out of the reservoir, hey Chris Fix here, uh, take all the fl old fluid out of the reservoir, obviously we don't want to be pushing all the old fluid through the system because it just makes more work for us, suck it out using the tool, fill it up with fresh fluid then start bleeding the brakes. Now it's important not to get any brake fluid on your bodywork because it does kind of eat through paint. Get that out of the way there. Right. Dunk our tool. It's coming through a little bit slow. Uh, if you don't want to use a tool, you can use like a turkey baster. See how kind of dark and dingy that fluid looks. So we're going to empty this out. Alright, so we're going to start by topping up our reservoir with our new fluid. I'm using Super Cheap Super Dot 5.1 brake fluid because race car. So we're going to top up the uh, reservoir, start bleeding the brakes. It's probably a wise idea if you just drop your cover your reservoir, you don't need to screw the lid back on because you're going to be topping it up quite a few times during the process. Right so I've bled the first three wheels, that all went well and I'll show you on this last one how it all works. Uh, if you want to know the bleeding sequence for your car look it up in the manual uh, but typically you work from the, the wheel furthest from the master cylinder and work into the closest. So for the Golf <coughs> The sequence according to our manual is right rear, left rear, 
right front, left front. So we're finishing on the left front here. Uh, so yeah, the other's all gone well. Uh, we've bled fluid until we get nice clear fluid out. We've topped up our reservoir in between. Now we've just got this last one to, to do. To do our nipples, I'm going to use a, a flare wrench, a line wrench. Uh, so it's like a normal spanner, but it closes in a wee bit more. Uh, so less chance of rounding off anything. So we'll just make sure that's nice and loose. We've got our kit set up. We've got our pump, our reservoir, and a hose. Uh, I found for these Volkswagen calipers that I don't need to use one of the black adapters. Uh, the hose itself just fits on nice and snugly. That works for me. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to clack, clack, we're going to crack the nipple. That's what she said. And we're going to bleed. Then I'll show you the obvious problem once we start doing it. And I'll show you how to fix it. So these Volkswagen ones are 11mm. So give the a crack. Try and build up some pressure. You see we're getting lots of air that's kind of coming, being sucked out, sucked through the threads of the, uh, of the nipple. So we are getting fluid out, but also get, getting a lot of air. So we'll just close it off for a moment. And what we're going to do, we're going to get some axle grease. Any old grease, really. Axle grease is what I've got. What you do, you pack that around the threads of the um, bleeder. Work some into the threads there. There we go. Once we get a nice seal with the grease, you'll find we get much less air. Can we can take a little bit of fine tuning. But now we're getting maintaining good pressure. Good pressure, getting fluid flowing. Here we go, so we get a nice, nice steady stream of fluid, very few air bubbles. Here we go, that's my top tip, a little bit of grease. I'm going to close that up. Since our reservoir is full, and then we'll change that from vacuum to, to pressure, let off the... Um, that off the pressure, then we can drain our, our reservoir. Once we make sure all the bleeders are closed, we're going to come in the car, stand on the brake pedal, some good pressure, make sure the pedal's nice and firm, which it is. We'll head round and double check for leaks. Right, so there we go, that was bleeding brakes with our Tool Pro vacuum brake bleeder. Works really well, it's a really nice solid bit of kit. Get some good vacuum on there, got the nice gauge, all the accessories. Um, slightly easier than using the one man bleeder. So, yeah, if you've got lots of brakes to do, this is a good bit of kit to do it. Uh, it's also probably quite handy if you've got some, some brakes. I don't know if you've ever had the problem before, some are just really hard to, to bleed, uh, so this might be a good solution for that. Certainly get some good vacuum on there. As you saw, the, 
the trick with a little bit of grease around the um, bleed nipple, certainly on some older cars, uh, just stops it sucking air in, just means you're kind of sucking the fluid out, makes a better seal there. That's my top tip for the day. Um, so yeah, it's a vacuum pump, it's also a straight pump. Some other things you can use it for. Um, <coughs> use it to um, bleed diesel fuel system. So we'll, we're not going to do the Mondeo fuel filter next. We'll give this a go, see if this speeds up that job. You also use it for checking the vacuum system in your car, looking for vacuum leaks, that kind of stuff. We'll find something to test that on at some point. But yeah, as a brake bleeder, works really well. <coughs> Yeah, quite happy with that. Just pour some fluid over the floor. Alright, and the proof. That's the fluid I pulled out of the uh, reservoir. That's what new fluid looks like. You can see it's a fair bit, uh, fair bit darker and mankier. The used fluid compared to nice new kind of perfect urine looking stuff. So yeah, definitely worth doing. Uh, this fluid is only actually about a year old, if you remember. I put those braided brake lines on once uh, the old ones failed inspection. So that was only about a year ago. So yeah, that's done really well. I use the Super Cheap Auto Dot 5.1 fluid on the Golf. Uh, it's a premium fluid. Um, hopefully it works really well. I uh, couldn't find much info on this fluid itself. Um, but they also do the Heavy Duty Dot 4. And they link to the data sheet on the website, so I had a look at that, and I'll tell you a little bit about that one because it's quite interesting. So this stuff's made for super cheap by Oztec Chemicals, Australian company, so it's locally made, not Chinese. Pretty cool. Uh, so dot four fluids. Um, the standard says our dry boiling point is should be at least 230 Celsius, 446 Fahrenheit. According to the data sheet for this. Uh, this has a boiling point of 243 to 265 degrees Celsius. So that's that's well above the the spec. That's kind of into dot 5.1 range. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty pretty good fluid. It's kind of well above the dot 4 standard. Uh, should work really well on the Mondeo. Uh, so that's what we're going to be using there. So I say I couldn't find the specifics for this one, but. I've got faith, it should be a decent fluid, it's quality assured. So yeah, um, see so yeah, I'll put links down to the tool down below and to the different fluids. So I say they do a dot .3, a dot .4, dot .5.1. Other makes of brake fluid are available. Uh, the Golf was running this stuff here, the Valvoline Brake and Clutch Synthetic dot .5.1. Only because I had a job lot of this that I got off the back of a lorry somewhere. Um, this worked really well, this is what I had at Hampton Downs when I took the car there. Uh, <coughs> Citroens and other cars with hydro pneumatic suspension use this stuff, green mineral hydraulic fluid, LHM plus liquid hydraulic mineral, um, it's French. So yeah, different cars, different fluids, generally it's going to be this one, um, and that's a good tool to bleed it with, so there you go. Comment, like, subscribe and we'll see you for Whatever's next. Cheers. Yeah. Ah, oh, what a knob. <laughs>